The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. He is in, he's on vacation right now. I think he's having a great time. Let's take a look. We are, uh, we're kind of flat, a little bit sideways this morning and everything. Um, we were slightly green, um, but you know, this is an ever shifting environment. Uh, the ES futures sideways, the Russell sideways, NQ sideways, the Dow futures sideways, gold doing about the same. The dollar floating at that 105 mark uh, that has held um, substantially and is quite the juggernaut right now. We'll see how that shakes out uh, today. We've had a weird week and this is Friday on it, so we'll uh, you know, tread cautiously throughout the day. Disney trading at 80.69. This broke its 200 month moving average, and which is not a good thing. They're having issues with Comcast currently, uh, Spectrum. They also are, th their lawsuit against DeSantis, which is the governor of Florida, continues uh, to devolve. This is not really the news you really want. Uh, DeSantis is relatively you know, popular in Florida, I suppose, from what I can kind of gather. Um, and I think any large company that focuses a lot on like the culture of uh, not only the state, but the country as well, kind of getting into lawsuits with you know, government officials that are so highly publicized, probably not the best uh, way to do things. But um, they're angling basically like a, they're kind of focusing on free speech now, right? Like what they did was free speech and we'll see what happens with that. It's a mess and uh, you know, they're getting hit pretty hard as well. And there's a lot of things as well on the fundamental side of their business that is, is kind of struggling a lot. Meta at 300. Apple has kind of continued its nosedive as well. There are some new developments that we'll get into with China, and they're expanding um, their kind of freeze on it as well. China makes up roughly 30% of their kind of consumption, which is massive. Now, of course, the ban did not uh, extend to all of China. Initially, this was just uh, government workers, but now it's going into like state sponsored. Uh, workers can no longer utilize Apple on the job. And then uh, Huawei is stepping in pretty heavily, and they will obviously be propped up uh, by the CCP. Tesla at 252, I have a story today that kind of shows, you know, one of the things I always harp on about Tesla is they're really a data company. Um, so understanding like the general routes that everyone takes, or the most traveled routes, um, kind of driving behavior of people like that. Um, and then also, getting data on their um, autonomous driving. When other companies start acquiring this, I'm sure they will purchase data from Tesla uh, in order to uh, enhance the autonomous driving capabilities of their vehicles. DocuSign did okay. They had their earnings yesterday. We'll take a look at that. Oops, wrong ticker. We'll just go on the monthly to see them up like that. Some interesting volume here, very wide price swing. Um, let's take a look, I'll get you the numbers here right now. Total revenue was 687 million, which is an increase of 11% year over year. Uh, subscription revenue was 669.4 million, we'll round that. Uh, that's an increase of 11% again. And professional services uh, and other revenue was 18.3%. And, uh, Excuse me, that was 18.3 million and an increase of 8% year over year. They did pretty all right. Free cash flow was 183.6 million, and that was compared to 105 million from the same period of last year. So that's, uh, that's pretty decent, especially in kind of a cash strapped situation that we're in, in the market. All right, let's take a look here. We'll talk a little bit, what I was saying earlier, with the Chinese band in uh, Apple. 
at least for the government. So that's local governments that's expanded, and then the state-owned firms as well. The essential ministries and agencies have restricted the use of foreign brand products in official business since around 2020. Uh, such curbs have since been expanded to employees of local governments, including prefectures and cities, and state-owned enterprises since around August this year, sources told Nikkei. Uh, concerns over the impact of sales in China and the Chinese market have dragged down Apple's market capitalization by $109 billion over two days. An employee at state-owned company in Beijing said she received a confidential notice in early September about the move. So yeah, you know, and this is a little bit of a response to, there's the back and forth going on with West and, and really particularly America and China. We, we banned the use of Huawei uh, phones in our um, kind of government systems as well. And I've seen a drop too. I did actually know a few people who had Huawei and I don't, I don't see them anymore. Uh, th that is, I don't see a prevalence of Huawei phones here like I used to. That's obviously um, just kind of anecdotal, but still, something to think about. China is one of Apple's most important markets, Greater China, which includes Taiwan and Hong Kong, kind of for about 20% of total sales. That's just in April and June period this year. The assembly of iPhones is also centered in Chinese factories, and the company's stock price fell 6.4%, two days from September 6th to September 7th. And it's not even just about, you know, selling the base phones either. Um, so many Apple services uh, make up a huge amount of their revenue. And this will be cut off uh, as well. We'll take a little bit more too. One of the ways that they have um, kind of combated this is with the, the Mate 60. And that uses the Kirin 9000 processor. So supposedly, as, as the Chinese media says, uh, actually gets speeds faster than 5G. I mean, that's dubious, right? I'm not even really sure that we get speeds that are e even 5G equivalent, at least in the States, right? That was the most interesting rollout to me. You need much more of a tighter uh, grouping of relays for 5G towers, uh, for 5G to actually work. And I mean, I've genuinely noticed uh, a slowdown during certain hours. It seems like the, um, the kind of infrastructure gets weighed down around 2 p.m., and around uh, work end hours, so about you know 4:30 to about 6:30, it's nearly impossible uh, to use my phone um, with, if I'm not on Wi-Fi. And uh, a lot of other people experience that too, and that is because you need these relays of 5G, and uh, building them was halted during quarantine, and we never really progressed. And uh, if you can switch back to 4G, it actually does operate a bit faster, especially in uh, really populous areas. So that's, you know, just it was just a bizarre switch over, and, and uh, obviously conspiracies abounded with that as well, which were entertaining. China's Huawei launches Mate 60 Pro Plus, and uh, again, we're not going to get this here, but it's interesting to look at, you know, one, how the Chinese economy is really going to kind of bolster itself, right? They're in uh, somewhat of a deflationary period currently. Um, obviously, I don't see a, at least in the uh, immediate period, a massive transition from smartphone users, uh, excuse me, Apple users in China into Huawei. Um, but obviously the CCP's um, enforcement is pretty wide reaching. If anything gets worse, we might see that and Huawei uh, might explode. Folks, stay tuned, we will be right back. We have some more uh, interesting news for you. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome back. Um, some quick news here. I know we have, you know, when I talk with some of you guys on the phone or via email, um, I know we have some people who are in, you know, IT or computer science and everything like that. I obviously have an interest in it as well. Um, so I'll just run over this very quickly. This isn't necessarily market related, but I think it underlines what I, what I say a lot, which is, you know, security and being um, vigilant about this, super important. And uh, I really do see a future where, um, you know, investing in some of these cybersecurity companies will be extremely profitable. It's a really long-term play, but this is a new bug that uh, came out, a new exploit. Um, CISA is the Cybersecurity Infrastructure and Security Agency. Uh, they release um, these kind of vulnerability assessments and names and how to remediate them. It's very interesting. So, if, you know, if you're in a an industry where you know IT is very important. Obviously, that's everything. But if you're more in that uh, kind of realm in that line of work, this is important to know if you haven't read it yet. And also, just for like general edification, because it's so important in today's society and will come so. Apache Rocket MQ is kind of like a cloud-based messaging and streaming system uh, that was open sourced by Alibaba um, a few years back. Essentially, what happens, and uh, again, too, this also kind of crosses into the realm of these strange, like you know, this global black market kind of uh, economy that goes on, right? So if you're seeking to like, let's say, shut down a website, okay? There was a, there was a famous one recently with um, Kazakhstan Airlines where they uh, had so much traffic going towards them that it actually shut down everything. And I have some suspicion that this happens with, uh, I, I know with the United Airlines, it, they say it was a computer issue, and this might be true, right? Infrastructure is really old. Um, this happened with Southwest Airlines as well. Um, you know, I, I'll take the companies at their face value um, and not, like, try to delve into anything strange or anything like that. But what I will say is, like, this is a, this is a valid concern of um, what are called botnets, right? So every computer, uh, if you run vulnerable applications, 
is kind of susceptible to these, right? And so in the case of the Kazakhstan Airlines, um, what had happened is there was a free VPN that was being installed, um, and that was on the, the Android store, right? And what had happened is, you know, these VPNs end up communicating with different servers. It's the same thing that happens with, like, uh, all of your appliances that communicate with the Internet, right? These can be susceptible to what are called botnets. And it's not really that it has any effect on you uh, as the consumer, but what happens is that uh, malicious actors can, can utilize this traffic, right, um, and redirect it to a different server. So in the case of... Um, uh, you know, Apache Rocket MQ that was communicating with this, uh, you know, Apache server that Alibaba had open sourced, and they were redirecting the traffic um, into basically Monero crypto mining. Super interesting. This just causes low latency speeds, but it can be used, um, at least in the case of like you know Kazakhstan Airs, to kind of like shut down the server because there is so much traffic. And this goes for these kind of botnets, if they're done correctly and can kind of evade um, any kind of detection, can go for a lot of money. And uh, it's super interesting. This is, uh, anything like Apache Rocket MQ is most likely going to be used just by an end user. So it, it'll probably be more for, you know, again, high scale hackers aren't trying to target individual people, right? They're going for you know, government assets, um, enterprise assets. Uh, regardless, though, you know, you want to stay safe, and if there's any kind of vulnerability, you know, you want to patch that on your end. So super interesting. If you're curious about this in any way, you can go to CISA.gov, and uh, they have a bunch of vulnerabilities listed, and it's kind of cool just to look through. So, yeah, there's that for the day. Um, we'll move forward a little bit. I was talking a bit about how data is so important to Tesla, and it's important to really every car maker data is so valuable even in its rawest form if it's just you know a simple you know kind of basket of, of random data it's so much uh, money it's valuable and the car companies are no different uh, so car companies here are collecting too much personal data from drivers who have little freedom to opt out and this is from a researchers wrote a report in assessing the data privacy policies of 25 automobile brands uh, all car makers received a privacy not included warning from the Mozilla Foundation, uh, which developed the Firefox browser and advocates for better online privacy and internet safety. This means that the report's authors have determined that the company's products to have, uh, uh, quote, uh, have the most problems when it comes to protecting a user's privacy. Cars are the worst product we have ever reviewed for privacy, the authors wrote, uh, calling for a privacy nightmare. The computing for cars is strange as well, right? Um, it's like peripheral, peripheral or like fog computing for a lot of these, but um, they're absolutely susceptible um, to being remotely hacked as well. And that's not to say that it's going to like, you know, I know there was a bunch of like fear that they would control like, the speed of the car. It's not that. It's just data on the car, right? Like where did it go? How fast did it go this hour? You know, all these kind of things. Still, that's very valuable stuff. Uh, the authors reviewed at least seven additional product categories, including mental health apps, entertainment electronic devices, smart home devices, wearables, health, and exercise products. Cars in the first category we reviewed where every product earned our privacy, not including warning label. And this is from the Mozilla Foundation. This is super interesting, I feel like. And I'll share this too. They can collect super intimate information about you from your medical information, your genetic information. And this is just from any of these kind of applications, not vehicles, obviously. Modern automobiles increasingly equipped with the latest electronic gadgets can record data automatically, connect to a car GPS navigation system, and it can collect location data and driver habits. Hook up your smartphone, and data stored there can be transmitted uh, to car makers. And as low-hanging fruit that offers many opportunities for car makers at low cost. I think we definitely will see going forward. I, I know the EU is really good at data protection. Uh, America, not as much. And, you know, the almighty capital kind of runs that a little bit. I would also say just kind of a general um, ignorance among uh, legislators about this kind of stuff. But um, interesting nonetheless. So we have that there. A big talk, and I actually did see someone in the den talk about it a while ago um, that I was bringing up, that a lot of these retailers were blaming theft um, for, you know, loss in revenue. As it 
as the situation transforms, a lot of these calls have come in and they just refer to shrinkage. It's not just theft, and shrinkage could be anything. And that shrinkage does include theft, but it also could be, you know, cashier errors, it could be administrative errors, um, it could be lost inventory uh, en route. So it's interesting to hear this kind of, um, you know, vocabulary shift, right? And according to CNBC, it's not the main drag on the profits. A quick key point here is the CNBC analyzed balance sheet to seven retailers to determine how much money they're losing from shrink and retail theft. Generally, the inventory losses are only a small fraction of the retailer's net sales. And remember, this was like a big kind of drive that a lot of these retailers had in their um, investor meetings, right? They were saying that theft in particular, not just not really shrinkage, but theft in particular was a main driver for some of their losses, right? At least for the quarter they were speaking on. Uh, some retailers are pulling back on their contention that organized retail crime is a primary cause of losses. And folks, we have a break right now. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Before we went to the break, we were talking a little bit about how shrink and uh, theft 
is impacting some of these retailers. Of course, earlier this year, that was a big uh, kind of conversation point, right? That this organized uh, kind of retail crime uh, was heavily impacting um, a lot of retailers. Um, famously, uh, Walgreens pulled out of some areas in Los Angeles because of this. Obviously, these kind of products being behind locked uh, store cases um, has become quite commonplace. However, some new releases suggest it uh, isn't that large of an impact. So look at this here. During the second quarter earnings reports in August and September, nearly two dozen retailers said shrink has continued to weigh in on profits. Uh, but the details each company provided and the explanations they gave for losses varied widely. Many of them said that shrink is at an all-time high and said the industry is struggling to control it. It's still difficult to compare the losses to the past years because most companies have never previously disclosed how much shrink costs them. Generally, the inventory losses are only a small fraction of the retailer's net sales. They also pale in comparison to other factors squeezing margins, such as excessive discounting and promotions, according to CNBC analysis of their balance sheets. While shrink is growing for some companies, losses are generally in line with retail industry standard of 1% to 1.5%, and that signals that it may not be as dire as certain retailers and trade associations have suggested. When they reported second quarter results, some companies like Target and Dick Sporting Goods offered clues into how much shrink is costing them and squarely blamed theft. Target lost about $219 million to shrink during their, uh, excuse me, during the three months end in July 29th, while Dick's lost about $27.1 million during the same period. Uh, Ulta and Foot Locker, which both blamed organized retail crime for losses in May, did not mention theft during their most recent results. Uh, they only use the term shrink when discussing how it squeezed margins. This organized retail crime, uh, you know, it is legitimate. Of course, with, you know, social media and everyone having a phone and everything like that, um, I think some negative things in the culture uh, get magnified quite a bit. I mean, obviously, this is terrible, right? Like, this is definitely, like, something that's just a kind of a net negative for society that these kind of things occur. And it'd be nice if they didn't. Um, but also, a lot of these companies, um, it's easy to take from them as well. There was an interview, I, I think, uh, that CNN did or CNBC, one of these uh, companies, uh, where they actually interviewed a guy who ran an organized retail theft ring. Um, he was in California doing it. He's in jail now. Um, but, you know, they interviewed him and kind of asking him, you know, how do you do it? What are some steps these companies can take to prevent this? Um, so on because it really does just it ruins it for everyone right and it's just sad to see this kind of stuff in the news I mean, it's negative uh, for mine, you know your mindset And uh, it was pretty insightful to listen to him. I'll see if I can find that I was watching that a few days ago I'll see if I can find uh, That video and I'll link it for sure because I think it's pretty interesting uh, Lowe's has some of the highest shrink numbers among companies analyzed by CNBC It has blamed the range of factors for the losses uh, sometimes it said that organized retail crime cut into profits, but in other cases it blamed weather-related damages. Walmart was a little bit more um, kind of tempered on it. Uh, they noted that shrink isn't always related to retail theft when reporting second uh, quarter earnings. It said it remains focused on other causes of inventory losses that are more controllable. And this will probably be like damage to products and route, um, lost products, uh, again, in, in transit, um, and, and probably administrative errors as well. That can also be a, a, a massive cause of losses. So, anyways, I think that's pretty interesting as well because, again, there was such a large uh, discussion in uh, the, the culture about how much is organized retail theft is, is, is affecting some of these profits. Let's take a look. I think this is pretty fascinating, too, as we kind of get in to see what the state of the average American consumer is. And this is like the delinquencies rise for credit cards and auto loans, and it could get worse. I think I spoke about this a little bit uh, yesterday, but I, I kind of want to keep going more into it. Um, because consumption is still, you know, staying consistent in some capacity. Um, it definitely has crawled back a little bit, and any drive in... Um, Consumption is probably going to be done by, uh, you know, citizens with more money. Uh, but still, I, you know, we still have loan payments that are going to resume, right? 
we have these like variable interest rates, at least like homes and everything like that, that are going to change. And uh, people might be pretty cash strapped. And I was speaking a few months ago how uh, more Americans are using credit cards uh, in order to pay for groceries, which you know might not just be good planning for credit score. So this is from the Washington Post. It's that more Americans are uh, falling behind on their credit card loan, see their car loan and credit card payments uh, than at any time more uh, in the past decade. A troubling signal of consumer stress is higher prices and rising borrowing costs are squeezing household budgets. The pain is most acute for lower income earners uh, who have largely used whatever they managed to save during the pandemic with the help of government stimulus checks and breaks on obligations such as rent and student loans. The increase in delinquencies and defaults is symptomatic of the tough decisions that these households are having to make right now, whether to pay their credit card bills, their rent, or buy groceries. Uh, now, as the economy finds its post-pandemic footing, there are no signs the hardship for millions of consumers will get worse before it improves. The average credit card interest rate, already at a record high of 20%, according to Bankrate.com, appears likely to keep climbing. As the Federal Reserve indicated, it could continue raising interest rates to get inflation under control. Student loan payments that were paused for more than three years are poised to resume in October, uh, and the banks and other lenders have been clamping down on credit cards, uh, excuse me, on credit for months as uh, a process that accelerated after the spring banking crisis sent shockwaves through the industry. And this is pretty crazy too. And you know, a, a lot of like lower income earners are in a, in a rock and a hard place. You know what I mean? Like, rent is extraordinarily high, at least in cities. And you know, I, I see, of course, you know, it's just, you're gonna have to get roommates and stuff like that is, is really the, the answer. But I mean, it's people even into their like early thirties who are struggling with this. And I, I've seen this like discussion. It's like, well, just, just move out of the city, like move to somewhere. And you know, the city's where all the jobs are and where people are trying to transition back into office work, which, you know, that's the prerogative of the company's leadership. But, um, you know, like it's, it's difficult, I think for a lot of people, um, you, you know, you leave the city and you have like a 40 minute long commute or something like that. I, you know, I have a buddy who lives outside of Chicago, or excuse me, he lived outside of Chicago because it was cheaper and he worked in the city and the commute was miserable. He spent a lot on gas, um, you know, insurance payments go up in those situations and stuff like that. So it's, you know, it's a tough situation to be in. Um, and this is the increase in delinquencies too. Obviously the highest in 2008, 2009, consumer loans, uh, pretty steady decrease up into it. And we just see this shoot up um, again, you know, like it's it's nuts, too. And with the high prices, at least like it was going on with cars and everything like that. I mean, it's no wonder that these I, I was paying. Luckily, my payments have gone down. And this is really a testament to being like serious about your credit score. And, and that's so important, especially in a society where loans are you, you need those to kind of survive. Right. And get stuff. Um, but cars are so expensive. I mean, Anyways, yeah, people are paying like 500 bucks a month for their car loads. It's nuts. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. 
Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. All right, so about 12 minutes past the open, we are a little bit green to the upside. In the uh, S&P futures, definitely up on some a uh, little bit of volume right now, which is nice to rustle down a little bit. Everything else kind of sideways or up. So we'll see how that plays out throughout the day. Uh, Apple gaining a little bit back right now, uh, up about 1.2%. There was a uh, someone was musing in the den. You know, is, is phasing out the iPhones and the government offices and employees, a, you know, a, a precursor to any kind of like uh, movement on China's end uh, against the U.S. What I'll say to that is Apple is really it, Apple products are extraordinarily secure. Right. Um, they keep all of their back end under. I mean, remember with the uh, there was the California shooter. Right. Um, and sorry to even bring this up, but um, the, the government wanted to get the feds wanted to get into his iPhone. And what that would have done is require kind of a back door, right? There's ways to brute force um, iPhone passcodes on older models. Um, but of course, you need to actually physically have the device. Um, on a software level, uh, Apple was unwilling to give them that back door um, because it would have compromised the whole system. To my knowledge, there's only been, I think, two major exploits that ever occurred on Apple products. Um, one of them had to do with uh, a calendar exploit um, that if you clicked on a message, it would... Uh, you know, take advantage of, of the calendar pop-ups and they could send you messages and kind of like utilize uh, some parts on the phone. And then there was another one called Pegasus, but that was developed um, by an Israeli cyber group with the government and uh, most most likely the U.S. government as well. Um, there's a uh, group in the U.S. government uh, with the NSA, they're, they're called the Equation Group, and they, um, you know, they're responsible for some pretty large, um, what are called zero days, right? And these are like massive exploits that have never been seen before. Um, most famously, uh, Eternal Blue, which compromised a lot of Windows systems. What I'll say with this is you, you want to look at it when you're trying to get inside the mind of like, you know, really criminals in general, but cyber criminals as well. It's, you know, I, I think of this like famous kind of, you know, <laughs> saying that my granddad had which is like, you don't have to be the fastest, but you just have to run faster than the other guy. And that's really what this is about, right? Um, it, I have a family member who's an incident response lead at, at Cisco, and they actually just strictly use Apple products, right? Um, just because there's not a lot of exploits for them, and they're relatively secure. It's far easier, you know, say there was some kind of cyber attack from China or something like that, or, or whatever, some other kind of entity, it would definitely be at some of the more, you know, antiquated kind of uh, infrastructure that we have, um, just because it's far cheaper 
um, to do that and easier. And I would say too, like on a on a side note as well, like if we ever hit some weird like deflationary period in America, like say like a massive recession, obviously you can use government spending to get out of that. I think a revamp of the um, IT infrastructure um, would be a really good way for the government to get out of that because we do have we have a weird old patchwork system essentially, right? Like we were America was the leader in a lot of this kind of stuff. So um, a lot of our tech is so old. I mean, we saw that even with you know United Airlines um, on an enterprise level, but think about it on a government level as well. So that's some interesting stuff to muse about. I wouldn't be too concerned with Apple at all because they're pretty they are pretty safe. I think more what it's going to be is just um, these are like shots on an economic level towards each other. So in the news of, you know, the green transition, poor Texas. So they, they suffer a solar and wind power drought and they're avoiding blackouts uh, using natural gas. Uh, triple digit temperatures aren't unusual during Texas summers, but power shortages coupled with urgent orders to conserve electricity are now routine. Uh, while Texans barely averted blackouts Wednesday evening, the state's energy ordeals are flickering uh, a warning to the rest of the country. This is Eric Cott. We were speaking about them yesterday, how they were paying riot um, to kind of stop mining for a little bit uh, during excessive heat waves. They call a stage two emergency on Wednesday evening, one step from rolling blackouts. Uh, high demand, lower wind generation, and the declining solar generation during sunset led to lower operating reserves on the grid and eventually contributed to lower frequency. Uh, businesses that use large amounts of power were redirected to curb their energy consumption, i.e. scale back operations. Uh, utilities urged Texans to unplug electric vehicles, turn off pool filters, etc. And we do use a lot of power um, for some like creature comfort things, uh, such as, you know, like pool filters and stuff like that. If you ever want like an insight of what it could be when, um, you know, a power management company like really drops a ball and you see wide scale blackouts, you should look at South Africa uh, because they have had, I mean, uh, there's a lot of it due to widespread corruption as well within the, the industry, um, but they experience daily blackouts. Um, just it's, it's a pretty nuts kind of case study. So uh, you can look that up as well to see kind of what the reality of something like that would be if uh, you know our country doesn't figure out something, and you know, of course, we have, you know, states are really in control of that kind of stuff. But um, you know, you can see what the future of, of that would be if there's not something that's done to change this, really. Uh, so it says businesses that use large amounts of power are directed to curb their energy consumption. Uh, Texans conserved enough power Wednesday to prevent blackouts, uh, but they were asked again Thursday to use less power in the evening when many come home from work and want to crank up the AC. Uh, last month, ERCOT issued eight emergency alerts to conserve power. The state's refineries, uh, manufacturing plants, and data centers need huge amounts of power. Texas produces 10 times as much solar power as it did five years ago. An estimated 7.7 .7 gigawatts of solar power capacity will be installed this year. About 9% of the state's peak demand on Wednesday. Renewables at times can generate 40% of the state's power. That is pretty impressive. Uh, neither solar nor wind provides reliable power around the clock. Solar predictably wanes during late afternoon, and the state doesn't have anywhere close to enough large-scale batteries to make up the shortfall. Yeah, I'm curious to see what will happen with them. Again, I'm a, I'm a big believer on um, nuclear power. We'll see what happens. Obviously, using what you have in the area, you know, a mixed portfolio, um, you know, dependent on the locale, super important. Um, but even with Texas, which you would assume, you know, wind, uh, especially at its coastline, and uh, solar as well. You'd think that'd be enough. But, uh, of course, they've also had a lot of people moving in there. And it's so hot, and it never has been this hot. So, interesting. We'll see what happens with that. Um, you know, I believe in the American uh, ingenuity. We'll figure something out on that. But it's important to keep that as, as a real situation uh, so that we actually uh, can solve it. Let me see here. I wanted to pull this up. This is cool too. This is JP Morgan is exploring blockchain based deposit tokens for payments and settlements. This isn't necessarily cryptocurrency, but it uses the same kind of concept, right? Uh, they're in the early stages of exploring a blockchain based digital deposit token for speeding up cross border payments. Guys, this is what we were saying so many months ago, that this is really the benefit of this concept of blockchain and quote-unquote cryptocurrencies. 
this isn't really a, gonna be a cryptocurrency and everything like that, but it, this skirts all these kind of issues, um, you know, regarding, you know, cross-border transactions and stuff like that. You can essentially make this little hub. If you're gonna have your own blockchain as a company, you can essentially make this hub and all your partners can plug into it and there is better liquidity. Um, you can plan better. I mean, this is, this is really, in my opinion, what I think the biggest benefit behind blockchain is. Folks, stay tuned. We have a short uh, segment after that and then we got you going on to Basil Chapman. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have a short segment here. So I'll run through this quickly. This is, um, you know, it, it kind of branches in a little bit to uh, some of the science updates I like. This is invasive species cost the global economy more than $423 billion annually. This is a inevitable, this is an inevitable result of global trade. Um, 37,000 so-called alien species have been transported due to human activities around the world. The cost of invasive species has quadrupled every decade since 1970. And I can give in... Uh, you know, an anecdote on this, right? Like when I was young, we would go to the, um, the Florida Springs, right? Swim all the time, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. As time has gone on, I've gotten into like scuba diving, I've gotten into like snorkeling and stuff like that. 
you know, I love going to the springs for it because it's just beautiful water, constant temperature. The clarity is unbelievable. But as I've gotten older, I have seen the introduction of like, you know, tilapia into these springs. I've seen uh, things called plecos, right, which are like the little algae eaters in tanks. And most notably is the water hyacinth, which is a massive plant. It grows on the top of the water and it completely chokes out, uh, you know, the floor of, of the river. Um, and, you know, this is just much more like quality of life kind of things. And it's sad to see it like transform like this, right? Um, but it does affect us long term. Um, you know, think about, too, all the kind of Japanese beetles that come and they can like mess up our uh, timber. A um, bunch of different weevils that affect us as well. Um, so, you know, this is a major thing. And, and honestly, it's like, what do you do about this, right? Like, it's, it's really difficult um, to, to solve anything. Um, I, I know at least for, uh, I suppose you could do something strange, like what they're trying to do with the mosquitoes, right? Which is uh, genetically alter them. Uh, so they only produce male offspring and that kind of kills them out. But like, I mean, can you really do that on such a widespread uh, kind of scale? So anyways, this is just some, you know, it's kind of sad news, I would suppose, too. But I think it's also important to understand, too, so if there's anything that moves forward in order to kind of, like, halt the spread of some of these um, species, you know, we support it as well. And it's important to keep, you know, our, uh, our locality uh, pristine. So, folks, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'll be with you next week as well as Tommy is out. We have Basil Chapman up next, and I hope you guys have a great weekend.